Detroit Homecoming has been made possible by the William Davidson Foundation. Stimulating innovation, developing leadership, sustaining valuable programming, and tackling critical problems in four focus areas. Jewish life, economic vitality, cultural and civic vitality, and education. And by the Ford Foundation. We believe in the inherent dignity of all people and are guided by a vision of social justice a world in which all individuals, communities, and peoples work toward the protection and full expression of their human rights. Ladies and gentlemen, Ethan Davidson from the Davidson Foundation. <clears throat> My next. Good morning, how's everybody doing today? This is uh, Jeremy Shido standing next to me whose uh, trail you've just seen. Uh, before I tell you a bit more about him and what he's doing, I just want to say that uh, the William Davidson Foundation, we do about uh, $60 million of, uh, of uh, investments of various philanthropic kinds every year. Uh, but this one here is one of the best returns on philanthropic investment in the portfolio. And I just want to uh, you know, tip my hat to Casey Crane, everybody at Crane's Communication for all they're doing. This is one of the best ROIs philanthropically that you can make. And we really appreciate being involved here. Uh, this trailer, uh, Sons of Detroit, that uh, my friend uh, Jeremy Shido has, uh, this film that he's made, uh, they just finished shooting, uh, and they're raising funds to complete the film to premiere next year. And they'd like to film it in Detroit, but they may not be able to because of the current film tax incentive landscape in Michigan. We know that media arts is an important part of Detroit's future, and that's what this uh, panel that I'm going to introduce uh, to you right now is going to be speaking about. Um, they gave me a you know, resume about all these people on this panel, and uh, the first thing that occurs to me is um, I need to get out of bed earlier in the morning and do something with my life because uh, it's a pretty exceptional group here. They're all good friends of mine. The first one is, um, is Mitch Album, and uh, it's funny, again, you know, I don't need to tell you too much about this guy because everybody in this town knows Mitch Album. He's an author, a columnist, a radio host, one of the principal architects of the film credits in the Grand Home Era. Let's hear for Mitch Album. Uh, another very good friend of mine, uh, my mentor, somebody I admire, my neighbor, Nancy Tellum, former president of CBS TV programming, now leading MGM Studios. Uh, since she moved to Detroit more than two years ago, she's advocated uh, to re reinstating some kind of policy to attract film and digital media to the Detroit area. Let's hear it for Nancy. And again, a, a good friend, uh, Tim Flattery, the chair, entertainment arts at CCS, a veteran of the Marvel franchise and many other films who train CCS talent that ultimately leaves for the West Coast or East Coasts. But we want to try to get those folks here, right, Tim? That's the, that's the idea. And uh, our moderator, another good old friend of mine, Randy Richardville. He's the former majority leader of the Michigan State Senate. Let's hear it for Randy. Do you have a mic? Oh, we've got a lot of them. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good, so are we. It's fun to be here. I tell you, I'm going to tell you a little story real quickly about the film tax credits. I think they were instituted during the Grand Home Administration. I know that. I voted for them. They've been changed two or three times. But I want to tell you about what happened about six weeks after Rick Snyder was elected governor. Rick's a good friend of mine. I admire a lot of his work. But he came out with this budget on February 7th of 2012, and we were all looking to see what he would do with the film tax credits, and at that point, he put down $50 million this year, $25 million next year, and zero in the third year, so basically eliminating the film tax credits. I had this great plan. I was flying out the next morning to meet people in Los Angeles to talk about recruiting them to come to Michigan to make films in Michigan, because we've got this great tax credit thing going on. So I get off the airplane, and I pick up the newspaper, and there's a picture of Clint Eastwood. He's from the Gran Torino movie. He's holding a shotgun like this. And the caption at the top of it says, Michigan to Hollywood, get the hell off my lawn. 
That was my welcome to Hollywood. So that started the film tax credit battle that lasted for about four years. Finally, it was eliminated. But uh, uh, I think there's a great opportunity to take a step back and take another look at the film tax credit uh, uh, potential. Mitch, what do you think? I know you were involved in the very beginning. Yeah, I helped uh, design the film credits that ultimately were put in place with Jennifer Granholm. Our uh, goal there was to beat all the other existing film credits because it is a competition in different states. Uh, and we did. And we put together a program that started at like 33%, worked its way all the way up to 40%. I won't get into all the details because it doesn't matter, but it led the nation. And we went from uh, $2 million in film business before we put them in to, I think, Randy, you may remember the numbers better, but I think the first year was like 50 or 60 million. The second year was 100 and something million. And the last year was about 280 million. Uh, and then boom, the thing was pulled out from underneath us. The rug was pulled out from underneath us. Our goal was not only to build a production class and artistic, you know, a movie making class, film, television, gaming, technology, but also to keep the young people here in Michigan, many of whom are probably you in various stages of, of age, who left because there were not creative opportunities. And we had so many people who were in Los Angeles or were in New York because they couldn't work in Michigan. And our goal was to try to keep that creative class here in the state of Michigan. And we succeeded and people moved here and, and we were developing a whole, you know, two or three crews deep. And then the rug was pulled out and now all those people are essentially either in Georgia or uh, where they have a big tax credit or someplace else. And if you remember back at that time, there was jobs. That's all we talked about political, uh, politically is jobs. You know, I was in office at that point and we were, our economy was down and the unemployment rates were up. So we wanted jobs and that's what it was all about. So we, we wrote a very, very, I, I hate to use the word liberal, tax credit, 42%. Uh, you came and did $10 million worth of business and uh, we wrote you a check for $4.2 million. And the criticism was, well, you're taking that money back to Hollywood. So over, the, over time, we changed that so that we, we made it more competitive with other states, but that said jobs had to be in Michigan if, they, if those people were available. Then they weren't available because we hadn't trained enough people. So we had uh, challenges over the 10 years or so that the tax credits uh, were in place. Nancy, you've got some experience and you've watched from a distance. Tell me what you think. Uh, well, th th that was actually when I first moved and I did the reverse move. Everyone seems to move from here to LA. I moved from LA to... Detroit, and the first thing I, as I was leaving LA, a couple friends and one major director said, you know, I have a film that actually is based in Detroit. It's about Detroit, and I can't afford to produce it there. I'm gonna have to produce it in North Carolina. And that was actually kind of stunning to me, and I, as soon as I arrived, I called the film commission, because I didn't really understand what really was going on, and since then, um, and I go back and forth and, and being a part of MGM, um, it's all about cost now. And every production right now is about where can we go to save money, whether below the line, above the line. And it's, it, it is so frustrating. We're actually at MGM producing the Aretha movie and we're going to Atlanta. And it is one of those things that is absolutely absurd and what I see, and again, from television production to film production, what I see what, what committing to a film credit has done to these communities in Atlanta, in New Mexico, in North Carolina, where it has such a halo effect of not just bringing films in, giving them credits, but actually giving people an opportunity to stay in the city, to, to build the craft there. So, when you look at the amount of productions that are going on in Atlanta, we're, we're dealing with, what, what Mitch, we were talking about, There's, or Tim, like at least two or 300 productions that are going on. And when you're looking at every project, whether from television or film, you're going, okay, where can we shoot this? We can either go to Vancouver, Toronto. We're only looking at places that offer tax credits because there's more demand for, for content the cost of production's going out, and we really don't have a choice but to find those locations where we can produce more cheaply. And don't you think that as Michiganians or Michiganders that <clears throat> there's, a, there's an element of pride too? 
And we've got the godmother of soul. We've got uh, Motown right down the road. It all happened here in Michigan, and we're filming it in Georgia. That doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to me either. But I think that that happens, that your entire state, you're proud of your state, who you are, what, what other things are there that you can show off about this state. You know, we've got pure Michigan going out to 49 other states trying to bring people here. But you could put out a film that was filmed in Grand Rapids, Detroit, Lansing, up in the Upper Peninsula, whatever, and you could be a little more proud of Detroit. I mean, I'm a conservative and I look at the numbers, but I think it goes beyond that as well. Tim, you're with the Creative uh, Center for Creative Studies. You've been watching and involved in this industry for most of your life, I think, or most of your career anyways. What are, what are, what are your thoughts? Um, my, so I've got a lot of frustration because uh, I I'd spoke to the Film Commission uh, a couple years ago. Um, and working in the film industry today, I see uh, mechanically what's happened with tax credits and how it affects um, states that embrace that, like New Mexico and Georgia. And um, my frustration lies, and I just wish that Michigan had the patience to, and the insight that Georgia has and had um, to see this through. So for example, when Pinewood came to Georgia to build their back lot and their studios and their stages where we shot Avengers, um, they, their back lot, normally a back lot is a, a, a bunch of, like you have a, a neighborhood uh, center square with houses on it and they're usually facades that we shoot in. Um, the way Georgia conceptualized this is to integrate the community and ingrain the community. So the houses that they built on um, Pinewood's back lot in, in Georgia were in ha their um, habitable houses that were for sale that the public could buy. So it's a working back lot that people live in and when they need to shoot in that back lot, the studio rents the houses back from them. There are working storefronts there. Home Depot, they made a deal with Home Depot that um, built a facility right on Pinewood's lot, and that's where construction gets their lumber and their tools. So there's this interconnection between the community, the film business, and um, small businesses and private businesses, and um, it's created a whole new culture there. So I'm frustrated about the lack of insight with Michigan because given what we have as a state and what we have to offer the film business, we could have been there and surpassed um, what George I, I, I believe we were there actually. And I think there was a misconception by, by people that this was writing a check to big actors and Hollywood people and the money leaves Michigan. When in fact, a, a lot more of the blue collar work, carpenters, hairdressers, people doing makeup, et cetera, et cetera. That was the economic impact that people weren't looking at. And I think that's a, a critical thing. I would have to stick in an editorial comment here too though. Um, we have term limits in Michigan. So in my career, in 14 years, I served with 457 legislators. So to maintain that continuity from the beginning of the film tax credits, or before it was voted on, all the way until the last iteration, which I think was the third bill that was passed, it was all different people. So they didn't have that institutional memory to be able to go along forward with the thinking and follow it through to the end when we were starting to make money. Well, you, you bring up, I think, Randy, the biggest hurdle to the whole thing, which is politics. It was killed basically because Rick Snyder decided, well, he made it, came out and made a speech. We, we can't pick winners and losers. Uh, and we don't want to give you know, tax breaks to people. Now that's baloney because we give tax breaks to people who build buildings right around the corner from where we are right now. We give tax breaks to the auto industry all the time. Uh, and, and we were willing to, to bend over backwards for the battery business that we didn't end up getting and, and some of the, the flat screen business that we didn't end up getting. So. We do pick winners and losers, but the thing was that it became political. And at that time, you mentioned the Tea Party was very big, and there was this whole thing that Hollywood is just a big liberal place, and we're giving our money to, to liberal films. And if politics gets involved with it, it's hopeless. It, it has to be viewed as, as a, an economic move and a social move, uh, and we are so equipped here because we are a blue collar place. We have electricians and, and construction workers and there's a lot of uh, symbiosis between what you do in making a car and what you do in working on a, on a movie. All below the line stuff, but it's the way it's positioned. If you're, if you're being positioned as we're paying Brad Pitt's salary, nobody's gonna be empathetic. If you're positioned as we're building a class of, of, of workers and, and artists and laborers who will have jobs and places to work, and by the way, the immeasurable part of it, 
is that people come to be in that industry. So in Los Angeles, for example, if you're trying to measure the impact of the film industry in Los Angeles, really, you have to take into account every waiter and waitress who's trying to get into the film business there yeah. and move there to try to get, but it never shows up in the numbers. So you know, they did a study, it was up north, uh, they did some study, and you can find these studies anywhere, which will kill the idea of a film credit or, or whatever you want to call it, because they'll show economically it doesn't make sense. There'll always be studies like that. There's studies like that in Georgia. But you get people who see beyond those studies and see, okay, you're not measuring this, you're not measuring this, you're not measuring this. That's what we didn't have. We had a lot of people waving the paperwork, yeah. and that's what killed it. And, and, and Mitch, that's a great point. And let's not take this for granted, but let's assume that the blue-collar base is what we're talking about, that, 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 that at least can be put into the, the numbers. But I want to move this conversation a little bit, too, away from uh, a, a movie studio into the newer technologies, digital technology, the other kinds of things where if Michigan was seen not as a great place to make films because we give you a whole bunch of money back, instead, this is a place where we have a solid base of workers, trained people that would come back to Michigan, which is what Detroit Homecoming is, is all about. But now we're also moving forward technology-wise into new arenas, and this is the place that you should come if you want to be involved in the new technologies. Yeah, I mean, look, uh Interestingly, the, this whole entertainment business is a very different time, like kind of looking forward now as opposed to when you tried to uh, institute this film uh, or tax credit. It's a, an entirely different business right now. Uh, it's run by streamers. It's run by technology. Um, there's a lot of digital production. The cameras are changing. Anyone can make a film. Anyone makes films, and in fact, there's such a demand for content that from uh, a technology standpoint, the growth of new technology that Tim obviously can speak to as far as what he does, but it's on a going forward basis, content's coming from everywhere. You're not, frankly, limited to producing films in LA or New York, and it gives frankly, Detroit and Michigan, a great opportunity to kind of, and this is also something that I was pushing when I first arrived, um, and I talked to Dan Gilbert about this, is that this actually could be a great opportunity for a digital production center. Um, the, the studios don't have to be designed in the same way it was. It can be done in anyone's house at this point. There are really, technology so much a part of producing a film or television. Um, series that it really would engender the opportunity to really grow the tech technology side here as well as keep our creative people here and to Mitch's point you know bring people from Los Angeles frankly and who are looking and it's becoming increasingly unaffordable to live in California that people want to come back to Michigan we just have to give them a reason to do so and what are the three, three words, maybe worldwide, that are most important to all Michiganians? Made in Detroit. Yeah. Am I right? I mean, everybody knows about the big three. Now, Shinola, you know, made in Detroit, means, means something. And I would like to have that for the film industry, especially when we talk about the advanced technologies that are out there. Tim, we haven't heard from you in a while. What do you think about all this? You're, the, you're well, at the creative, Center for Creative right. Studies, so you probably know more about this than I do. I'm sure well, that. I, I can attest firsthand that um, the talent in Detroit is amazing and, uh, and, and there's, a, there's a scope of talent here that would surprise LA. My film students, Nancy's met them and has spoken to them. A large many of them want to make their films in Detroit and want to live here in Michigan. And um, to Nancy's point, the fact that we've got streaming happening, that there's Netflix and Amazon and all the opportunities that that's allowing us, um, not just in the growth of production, but growth in animation, but also the, the opportunity to be able to make a film anywhere, make a, a, uh, be a showrunner and make a series anywhere. And so that's something that my students are interested in doing. They have an entrepreneurial spirit. Um, they have stories that they want to tell. And so we're guiding them to tell those stories based out of here. That's what they want. That's what I want for um, the industry and also for um, Michigan, but also for to build other opportunities for um, 
for future students coming into CCS? Yeah, and in a way, we could take advantage of the situation. I went down to North Carolina to the studio down there to watch them filming Iron Man with uh, Robert Downey Jr. And, and while I was down there, I was talking to the just the hands-on kind of people around the studio. And I would guess between 20 and 25 percent of those people were from Michigan. Uh, Kale Davidoff, his, uh, his, his father, Mark, um, I, I ran into him down there. I said, what are you doing here? He said, well, we, after the film tax credit, I didn't have anything, it couldn't work in Michigan, so I'm down here making a film, you know, this is a few years ago. Um, but now these people have been, a lot of people that are left Michigan had to leave because the film industry left Michigan. But now if we were to reinstitute it, now we're going to be bringing back talented and more experienced people. Is that, is that right? Well, it's a gypsy business. <clears throat> and anyone in the movie business will tell you that. But as Nancy reiterated, it's a different world now. The streaming, the digital content, gaming is bigger than movies. Gaming has always been bigger than movies. And if you don't write your credits, and let's look forward. Let's talk about, okay, could we read? I don't even want to use the word revitalize because that harkens back to the past. Could we just invent film credits, pretend like we never had them before? What I would focus on is giving the biggest percentage breaks to brick and mortar operations where you actually build studios, where you build digital editing places, where you build gaming and, you know, and, and, and less percentages for a $180 million movie or a $300 million movie that's gonna come in and then be gone in the end. And you're gonna to have to pay percentages of the actor's salaries and things like that. One of the changes that we made, for example, and how you adjust along the way is that producers, and Nancy can tell you, you can have 12 producers on a project. You can have 100 producers on a project, and they all get a half a million dollars, and they don't do anything. I know, because I've been one of those producers. And, and, and yet, they would, under certain rules, qualify for a break, and they don't even set foot in Michigan. We put a cap on that, and we said, you know, there was, I think it was $500,000 for producers. That's it. You, know, you can have 12, but you're only one, one of them is going to have to be here, and that's it. There are other rules that you can put about you have to physically register your loan out companies, which is how actors get paid uh, frequently. They have to be registered in the state. Withholding tax has to be taken out here in the state. There are many adjustments that you can make to kind of shave off the part that scares people and enhance the part that should attract people. But if you can sell it on, we're going to build a digital, technological, entertainment class and industry and business in a state where it's very affordable to live, where we have lots of empty buildings that could be reconfigured to become studios pretty cheaply, uh, and where we have a burgeoning city now, where I remember when we did these tax credits, we said, well, the one thing we really can't kind of create is a modern looking city, because at the time, we were selling it on, well, if you're looking for a 1950s looking city, you can film in Detroit. Now you can in downtown Detroit. When, when that Hudson building goes up, you can have skyscrapers as well as snow landscapes and woods landscapes. And you think about the whole breadth of our state. So it should be positioned as that. And I'll add one last thing. It must be positioned with a length of time guarantee because Hollywood is not stupid. Uh, they will look back and say, well, Michigan had this before and it lasted three years and it was gone. I don't want to commit to a film that's going to start making, filming next year or a TV series that's going to go on for years and then have the thing pulled out. So there needs to be a length of time in which it is guaranteed. You can even sunset it if it makes people feel more comfortable, like, well, we'll sunset it at 10 years unless we see that it's still working. But there has to be a length of time guarantee. If that happens, I think we could get it back. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, the idea that it was such a short term and it was taken away, um, believe me, I mean, if we were to reinst or I, I do believe that we have to craft an entirely different looking proposal that does address a lot that Tim was uh, uh, mentioning of what they were successful in, in Atlanta. I mean, even in Canada, which is obviously from a producer standpoint, the first place we look, there are certain things in order that's a tiered credit based on how many Canadian elements that we're incorporating in the film. There's no reason to take an entirely fresh look. Looking at the industry as what it is right now, which is, 
has radically changed and is constantly changing as we speak today, whether in esports, whether in gaming, and in film and television production, and start crafting something that's truly more relevant to how things are being produced and the way in which that we can really enhance the economy of Michigan, which again, I, 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 it's so frustrating to me because I see it as such a wonderful opportunity and the halo effects of really instituting something like that can, that can help not only the city but the state. Yeah, and unfortunately, one of the difficulties, right, right toward the end there, we were negotiating directly for 10-year contracts to come to Michigan. Not only for the, for the bigger films, but also we were looking hard for television series. Because if you bring in one of the big box kind of guys, uh, they didn't want people that didn't have experience. But you could build over a 16, 13, 26, whatever they are now, week television series. You could develop people and develop careers so they would be ready for the bigger things uh, when they came. So unfortunately, that rug was pulled out. But we also had difficulties with 10-year contracts and agreements because we only budget in Michigan one year at a time. That's something that legislatively we would, we would have to work on. But I agree that's an important part if you're going to be negotiating back with ca California. Tim? I just, uh, given, given the new opportunities, uh, my conversations with students now are, uh, how are you going to make a difference here as a storyteller in Michigan as opposed to the mindset of, I've got to go to L.A.? And luckily, just because of where technology is going, young filmmakers now are seeing that. And I, we just need, um, we need to build the infrastructure and hopefully, if, if this can be reconceived, um, to give it a slam dunk for students to be able to um, just step outside their own door for opportunity or stay with inside their own door because you can make films anywhere. Um, that's the biggest thing for me for upcoming filmmakers is um, just just knowing that our, our the business has changed. Huge tentpole movies are going down to a smaller percentage. That streaming is going to be um, the the mainstay of the entertainment business, and um, opportunity can be had here as well. Yeah. I mean, that's that's. That's something that I'm passionate about, and why and why I teach. Um, what what are, are the young people? Are they, are they excited to be in Detroit? Do they say, "Oh, good, I'm gonna. Uh, this is where I want to make films. I can make it here in Detroit." And, and I know content is so important. You know, Netflix. Everybody is out there grabbing for content, content. So I don't think content has to come from LA. But are people from Detroit? Your students? Are they? I'm excited to tell stories from Detroit. Yeah. Some um, some are, and some are afraid to tell stories from Detroit because because they, they just don't know how to go about it. They feel, again, some feel like they've got to go to LA. And it also depends on the filmmaker. We have, um, in, in, in my department, I have many filmmakers that are um, passionate about documentary and passionate about um, experimental filmmaking. And then there's another percentage that are um, passionate about narrative. So it depends on their sensibilities. But the, the documentary filmmakers, they're rooted deeply here and are making amazing films. When we have screenings, you, you guys need to come. Um, there's, a, like I said, there's amazing talent here in Detroit and um, with great scope. There's amazing talent here in Detroit. There's amazing talent around the country and around the world we want to bring here. I think there's an industry that we can build, an industry that's growing. It's a newer industry, and we've got roughly 30 seconds, so I'm going to... Mitch, is there anything you'd like to add right here at the end? The film Detroit was not filmed in Detroit. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about Aretha. The film that was, you know, about the riots and everything was not filmed here. Uh, it was filmed in a place where they made it attractive to the industry to make it. We can either continue to be a state that just says, well, we're really good at getting dirt under our fingernails and that's what we do, and we are, and there's no reason not to be proud of that, but we all know what the future is for that type of work. Or we can say, you know, there'll be a point at which streaming and entertainment and everything will probably be a larger business than the car business. Uh, because everything from YouTube to communication to office communication to everything is done via the computers. And either we want to get into that kind of world or we want to say, well, we're proud of our Rust Belt things and then we'll go someplace else for that. But our kids are going to go where those jobs are. 
And if we want our kids to stay here and, and keep Detroit and Michigan growing and that thing, we need to somehow make ourselves more attractive to all of these industries. And this would be one step. Ellen, would you like to make a closing comment? No, I, I, I completely uh, agree with what uh, Mitch said. I, I do think, uh, as I said, the entertainment business is changing so radically right now. There will be continued need for content. There will be continued need for people who are the carpenters, who are the, and to learn new skills. Because as, uh, as we were relying on certain industries here, um, there, and with everything in the United States, there's going to be a lot of retraining that's going to be required because of technology. And I think this, this gives us a tremendous opportunity if we could institute something to attract this business to this state and city that it could you know, really offer a wonderful opportunity to retrain people and offer them a whole new opportunity. Just <clears throat> what are we going to do about it? Yeah, I think, I think for me, once I learned and understood the industry, the impact that it has on the rest of the world, and then also economically what it could do for Michigan and for the young people, that then it started to build a passion within me, and I still have that passion, and I think all of you do too. And uh, I hope all of you that, that heard today would uh, take, a, take a hard look at this and see whether or not you think we should approach the governor and the legislature and make a difference in this industry. Thank you very much for... Thank you all. Nice job. <laughs>